Hi guys, it's Kelly Lanavola here, and I am thrilled to be back with another video uh, for Neat and Tangled. So this is the September release. I'm going to be working with uh, Year Pretty, the Oak Leaf. I'm not using the die set, but I did want to let you know that there was one available. And then I'm also using the um, Landscapes Duos stencil. So or, I'm going to start out doing the stencils. This is what I do to all of my stencils. Um, I use Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And it dries repositionable. So what I do is I put it on the backs of my stencils and then I don't have to worry about them sticking down or holding them down with any kind of tape because they are self-adhesive. So I'm going to put my uh, card, what am I working on? Canson watercolor paper? Um, the Monteval, that's what it is. Um, and so I don't typically stamp my sentiments first, but I needed it for the placement of everything else. So I picked a um, warm brown, this is warm wool from W plus 9 to stamp my sentiment in, but you can really use um, just any brown that you have on hand. I just happen to have this one. And if you watch my videos normally, you know brown is not my go-to. Um, I like dark black ink, but um, it's fall. And so in preparation for doing a fall coloring, um, a fall colored card, this is what I'm doing. I'm using that same brown ink to stamp my leaves. I used um, two inch post-it note tape to create some masks. And so um, I'm going to stamp the ones that I want in the forefront first. I don't typically tend to stamp um, my leaves like all in a row because then I don't, it doesn't look uh, I guess organic. It doesn't. It doesn't look natural. Um, so I usually tend to stamp my items when I'm stamping multiple items, like I am here with this leaf. Um, I try to stamp a couple on the front and then mask those, and then stamp a couple on the back. So that's kind of what the game plan is here. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting too close to that sentiment. That's why I stamped it first, so I would know where that was at. And then I just cut two masks and I move them as I need to. Um, because who wants to cut like 18 masks? I don't. Um, so when I did this part, I was like, ooh, they kind of look like crystals. Oh, let me make another card. <laughs> so now this time I am switching over to black. I am stamping in black Simon's stamp ink for the sentiment. And then I am going to go ahead and stamp um, the leaves in black as well. Um, it is, both of these inks are um, archival and waterproof because I am going to be doing some watercoloring, but I really just couldn't resist, like, once I saw it and, like, that they kind of look like crystals, um, I couldn't unsee it, and I just really wanted to make another card. So moving on to the actual watercoloring, I'm going to be using Distress Oxides. I stamped some of the leaves on the top of this one as well, so it kind of frames in that sentiment. And then I'm going to start the painting, except... Um, so I'm using a ranger craft mat and I'm just smushing them down there. But what I was going to say is I didn't actually do the painting. You're going to see here, um, this is my son. <laughs> I can't even take credit for this card. This is my child. Um, so basically what happened was I was off of work today and so I was crafting um, while he was playing with his cars. And if you have children, then you already know that once you're doing something, uh, all of a sudden, it's the most fascinating thing in the world, and the child wants to be a part of it. So, um, literally, a four-year-old child can do this. It's super simple. So, what you're going to do is put down clear water all over wherever you want the pigment to go. Here, I just let him put it wherever he wanted it. I made sure there was enough water on to for the pigment to flow. But other than that, I, I mean, I let him put it wherever he wanted to. Sometimes I had to cut him off because he was trying to put too much... Um, color down and I was like hey 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 we got more colors we got to fit on here so that twisted citron kind of got the short end of the stick because um, there wasn't <laughs> enough room left after we were done but you can see here as he is painting um, that it kind of looks like a hot mess you know it doesn't really look pretty and soft and all of those things first things first um, you can use any watercolor medium for this. I'm using Distress Oxides because I think that they're really pretty and they dry super soft, but any watercolor medium will dry back. Second of all, um, I am, I don't typically use this kind of color palette, but I thought that it would be really pretty 
and there wasn't any kind of, as you can see, I let my son paint the whole thing, so there wasn't really any rhyme or reason. I did go in and blot up some of the extra moisture that was there, which you can always do um, when you are watercoloring. If, if it seems like you have too much water, if it's pooling, um, or you got too much pigment on there, just go in with a, a dry, what did I use? Paper towel. Nah, there's a word, yeah, to evade you. Anyway, um, so then we're going to go ahead and paint the other side as well. Here I just wanted to show you, he got the water up just a little bit too high. It was going into the sediment. So I just used a clean paper towel to blot up the water and um, it was fine. It just, it dries really quickly and it didn't end up going that high. So I let him pick out his colors and just, um, this one he did really completely by himself. Once he had all of the colors down, I did notice that he got some uh, spatters like by the sentiment. So I blotted them up and there was still pigment there. So the way that you're going to fix that is you're just going to go in with clean, clear water and just dab the area where that pigment is. Let it kind of pool there for a second and then go back in with that clean paper towel and blot it up. Um, most colors will lift even with regular watercolors. Um, or Zig clean color markers, they lift really well. Uh, Distress oxides do too. So these are the colors that I'm going to be using for this crystal card that I just manufactured. I actually painted this one myself. I know, big pat on the back for me. Um, <laughs> so, but I did the same thing that he did. I just put down that clean clear water anywhere that I wanted um, the pigment to flow and then just picked up some colors. So for this one, I used Faded Jeans, Salty Ocean, Peacock Feathers, wilted violet and pick raspberry so i got my black i got my bright colors it's making me really happy um and again there really was no um particular formula for how i put down my colors i just wanted them all kind of uh, represented in the card because i knew um i knew i didn't have to worry about it because there weren't any cards that were going to be yucky to together you know what I mean like that peacock feathers even though it's green it's so blue based that it works really well with the pink and purple so if you do want some softer edges the way that I like to do that is to put clean clear water down and then take the clean clear water to the pigment so it just kind of softens out those edges and you don't get such hard lines I personally like a mix of hard and soft lines but it's just really up to you and what your style is I did feel like this one was a little bit washed out, like I had too much water when I first started. So I just went back in and added um, more of the pigment. I forgot to mention, by the way, I'm using a, um, eight, a uh, number eight round brush from the Silver Brush Company. So just adding those back in anywhere that I felt like the um, edges were a little bit too, I don't know, brush-like, too manufactured, I just kind of pulled them out. And then of course, just like I did before, I'm, you know, blotting up any areas that I don't like. I switched to a number two round brush to do some spatters up top because I don't, I'm not framing this piece. I don't have a top and a bottom. I can do those um, spatters and then it's not going to make the crowd, the card look crowded. So I just basically spattered on every color. Not particular about that either because I kind of like when the pink lands in the blue and blooms out a li little bit. I think it's pretty. Um, if you don't, you can be more controlled with it um by just using less water so here i'm using perfect pearls in the color perfect pearls because i thought these looked like crystals i thought that they should have some shine so i'm just scooping out a little bit onto my craft mat adding a little bit of water and then this is still wet so i'm just flicking it on while it's still wet that will cause it to bloom into the wet areas um and then also add little dots of shine. If you added it after it was dry, it would add just the droplets. So again, you're gonna have to make the choice over um, what kind of look you're going for. You can see because I used the Distress Oxides and they are part pigment ink, it did really, really soften the stamped lines. I don't own a brown um, pen, like Copic Safe Writing Pen, um, like I do the black. So in order to make those lines stand out a little bit more, I actually went in with a dark brown Prismacolored pencil. The only thing I will tell you is, um, just like if you're coloring anything, it's important to keep the um, colored pencil sharpened. But especially if you're doing the lines, if you don't keep it sharpened, the longer you use it, the more blunt the tip becomes and the wider your stroke will be. So if you, you'll have varying uh, line widths. 
but I went ahead and outlined that whole thing for this, the crystal card, I wanted to add some dimension to it. And so I'm using, I just picked some Copic markers that matched, um, and I picked them in similar values. So I picked a BG45, a B04, a V04, and an RV04, because they blend with that last number. So their fives and fours are going to work together. And so I did add some shadows underneath some of them, but then I also went in and added just some random shading because I didn't want them to look like leaves. I didn't want to shade them as one whole piece. I wanted them to look more like crystals. Um, I really love this sentiment, uh, the, the you're pretty, and then all of the little coordinating um, sentiments that go with it. You can either put them on the front or on the inside. So one of them says you're pretty, um, pretty kind, pretty brave. Um, they're just really awesome, encouraging sentiments, and I just love them. Plus that font. I mean, seriously, look at that thing. Look at the script on this. Um, just stunning. So anyway, here's me. I'm, I'm adding just those little bits of shading. I'm not adding shading in all of the areas. I'm certainly not shading them as if they're one whole leaf. I'm just picking kind of pieces, parts. I'm using the tip of the marker and flicking the color into some areas. Because the watercolor... Um, puts down such a light layer, you can really layer colors over it, so you don't necessarily have to put the BG marker on top of the peacock feathers. You can put the BG marker on top of the picked raspberry, and they'll still blend and work really nicely together. So just going through, there wasn't really, normally I can tell you like how or why I do something, but for this one, there really isn't any rhyme or reason for how I picked them. I just wanted to make sure that there was enough shading throughout the whole piece. Um, and also when you're looking at crystals, the way that the light catches them is sometimes it's just the edge. And even though the whole thing looks, well, any gemstone really, um, even though it looks, you know, like a sapphire, sometimes it'll catch an edge and that edge looks purple instead of blue. So sometimes you'll see me just adding little lines of color, not even um, flicking them out or blending them out, just adding little lines here and there just to get that variation and that look of like multifaceted crystals. So, um, I, you know, I did all of the colors. Sometimes I use the colors to go back in and blend in with other colors. Um, but then to, in order to kind of play up the idea of that shine, I'm going in with a white Prismacolor pencil. I have a very sharp tip on this so I can get in all those little areas. You want to use light pressure if you're coloring um, for five minutes and your hand hurts, then you're using too much pressure. So just go in very lightly, kind of blend that out. Again, no rhyme or reason. I have no reason for why I picked the areas I did. Um, just kind of went through and picked certain um, parts that I thought should have a highlight on them. Um, and just because I wanted to have a good variation, another thing that I did is kind of added starbursts with the... Um, white gel pen, or I'm sorry, with the white colored pencil, then I'm going to go back in with a white gel pen and really play up those highlights. So sometimes I'm putting them in the same area that I use the white colored pencil, but sometimes I'm not. So sometimes you just have a really strong highlight that's just white. I did, however, always add that white gel pen to the middle of the little starburst. I'm going to use my EK Success writing pen to re-outline that black and make them really bold. Um, since they kind of got washed out by that Distress Oxide. I did not outline the areas closest to those starbursts because I kind of liked how the lines faded out. Now we're going to move on to the backgrounds of the cards. I hope you didn't forget about those stencils because we haven't used them yet. <laughs> so basically the premise of this these stencils, the combination, is so that you can create different hills and valleys and they fit into each other and work really nicely. I'm not going to use them that way though. I'm going to use them to create um, kind of a soft wavy background. So for this peacock feathers, I'm not covering the whole piece. I'm starting actually on like the plastic part that's masking the background and I'm just giving a really soft line um, around the edges. Then I'm going to take that off and I'm going to flip it around so that it's a different pattern. So this is this is one pattern, and now I'm going to flip it over, put it back down, and do the whole thing all over again. 
This is just going to create some a really soft background. I'm making sure you can see um, over on the right hand side that every time I ink up the ink blender, I'm pouncing it off because I don't want really strong color for this background. I want it to be interesting, but I do want it to stay in the background. Once I'm done with that, I'm actually going to switch over to the other stencil because it is a different pattern. And um, I'm going to do the same thing, just stay um, on the edges of those lines. And then when I'm done with this um, layer of it, I will flip it over and do the same thing that I did before. So ultimately, there'll be four pieces that were kind of layered on top of each other. But I'm going to spare you all four of them because now you've watched me do three and you're probably bored to tears. My apologies. So once I had that done, then I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, um, flip it back around. But you can see how it's starting to build just some really interesting patterns in the background. So you don't always have to use all your stencils for what they're intended for. This is after the fourth one. So this is the completed background. And I think it looks really pretty and soft and almost like little ribbons. If from that Tombow Mono Multi Glue you get any stickies on your paper, and sometimes when I use them the first time I do, um, I just use a white eraser to go over any areas and it'll pull up that sticky part. I'm going to do the same thing that I just did for the fall card background, but this time I'm going to use antique linen. Uh, side note, I should have done this one first. I should have done this one first because um, it picked up some of that green from the peacock feathers. So the first layer does have like a little bit more green. And then the other thing that's different is I didn't just stay to the edges. I colored in, I colored, I ink blended in the entire stencil for this one. So it is a little bit darker and it has kind of a green tinge, but you know, whatever. Uh, I'm not starting over. So here's the two completed. And then we're going to start putting our card together. I had to cut those panels down, um, which was kind of heartbreaking because I really love the full piece, but the full piece was just too big to be a card. So I'm using white fun foam and putting that on the back so that I will be able to pop up the um, stamped pieces. And you can see there's quite a bit of area between um, the bottom of it and the top of it before those foam pieces. And that's because I wanted to adhere these little strips of paper just to um, kind of give it a finished edge. So I cut just a quarter, um, yeah, a quarter of an inch off the the piece of paper I had. I used a dark brown and a navy. Those are both from um, Simon's Stamp. And then I just adhere it so it's even and then trimmed it off. I'm going to do the same thing on the top, trim that off. And then I'll just add um, some scotch foam tape over those pieces so it'll do double duty it will adhere the bait um the painted piece to the base and then it will also make sure that that little um colored piece that little frame piece doesn't go anywhere so i'm going to adhere those down to the card for the um crystal one i adhered it a little closer to the top um just because i had so much going down on the bottom and then for the um, what is the fall-ish one, um, I'm going to do the same thing with that with dark brown uh, to just frame that piece in, trim it off, and then um, I adhered that more in the center. They have um, Neat and Tangled has new uh, sequins coming out with this release. This is it. It's super pretty. I love the pinks and the purples, but there's also gold in there. And so I used gold sequins to kind of offset my sentiment. And I thought that was really pretty with the color combination. And then I used um, the clear sequins for Neat and Tangled for the crystal one. The only other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use these Morning Dew Nouveau Drops. Um, typically, I use glossy accents on top of my sequins to make sure that they aren't going to go anywhere in the mail. But I knew I was going to use the Nouveau Drops to kind of highlight those little starbursts in the crystal. So I figured, meh, let's try it. And it worked. It was totally fine. So that's it. Those are both cards, two totally different color schemes, but pretty much the same layout and definitely the same technique. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.